Yeah, no, we're almost limited out on 25s. You know, it's been a decent morning, but we're going to start throwing the 26s back until we start getting into the 30s, you know? You know, I have not paid a visit to the coast of South Texas in way too many years, which for me is a huge bummer because it's actually one of my favorite places to saltwater fish in the entire country. Florida is cool, Louisiana is the bomb, but there's something about the quiet desolation of the south coast of Texas that's just like no other place in the country. And for those unaware, while Texas has some great red fishing, the real draw here is its trophy sea trout fishery. Now I met my buddy Darren Jones many years ago when he was guiding for a Texas operation based in the southern end of the world famous Laguna Madre. And I actually bumped into Darren randomly in an airport last year. And he said, dude, listen, I'm hooked up with this lodge on Baffin Bay. You gotta come down this March and chase some sea trout with us. Now, little known fact, despite his heavy metal land-based shark fishing persona, did you know that dear friend of the Hookshots program, Zach the Hammer Miller, is eight up with sea trout fishing? So I said, you know what, I'm gonna invite the Hammer down. I'm gonna show him what the Swank Lodge life is like at Baffin Bay Rod and Gun. And I figure if he gets too out of control, Darren's an ex-Marine man, he can kill people five different ways with his bare hands. Don't get rowdy. I love you too. Come here, give me a kissy. Give me a kissy. Me, personally, I'm most comfortable in like a Motel 6 or a La Quinta off the highway and by a truck stop and like blood stains and knife holes in the wall and shit like that. I mean, I'm not supposed to have nice things and Lodge is way, way, way too nice for me and my meager existence. This is single-handedly the most impressive wall of saltwater assassins I have ever seen here at the Baffin Bay Lodge. Now, what I did not know until we got here is that this was going to be a heated competition because tucked away in Miller's bag was the coveted world championship trout waiting belt. Being a fan of uh, Randy Savage and Ric Flair, uh, I, I wanted that belt because I, I like to channel my inner, my inner wrestler sometimes. Let me tell you something, brother. This is my, this is my jam right here. These guys don't have a chance. Yeah, so, so Joe and Zach get into the airport early. I'm already down here, have things set up, and I'm like, well, let's, let's not just sit around the house. Let's, let's get out on the water, so. What color are you throwing? What color am I throwing? Yeah. What color are you throwing? I'm throwing white. You don't worry about what color I'm throwing. The belt. I've never been to Texas before, personally. I have lots of friends who live in Texas, but for years I've seen nothing but these pictures of these giant trout coming from Texas here in Baffin Bay, and it's always just blown my mind when I see the pictures of these big old humpback spotless trouts coming from these mud flats in here. And you know, cause we didn't have a lot of time, we couldn't run really far. So that warm up was not super productive other than Miller, who stuck a couple of small redfish. My first fish in Texas, the home of Pantera. Yo, I will never throw catching redfish out the door. I love catching redfish. They are pound for pound, mean, nasty fish. But this is big trout time. So redfish kind of get in our way. But I considered it kind of like hitting the weight room before the real competition began. They've got what I'm certain is a beautiful breakfast spread downstairs, but Zach is not joining us. Zach Hammer Miller does not do breakfast. Did you know that? Did you know he didn't do breakfast? Now here's the thing, right? I don't really care where in the country you go in the month of March. It is just one of the most unpredictable weather months the entire year. Slightly soggy, slightly sporty this morning. You know, Gloucester this time of year is just, it's beautiful. Now for the rest of our days here, we were actually running on the boat of Captain Aubrey Black, who owns the lodge. I'll tell you right now, if like I had to build a stereotype of a trout man in South Texas, it is Aubrey, Captain Aubrey Black. Well, I'm going on my 16th year now on Baffin. And the thing that really makes the bay special fishing wise is it's a landlocked hypersaline lagoon. So our salinity is real high. And while it's high and would be fatal to the fish in some other areas, these fish have all adapted. Aubrey is a guy, he, he will tell you he is very OCD. He counts casts, 
He is a meticulous record keeper. So between Darren and Aubrey, who have been fishing Baffin Bay for a lot of years, we had some exceptional local knowledge on our side. It was, it was cold, it was misty, it was damp out there, but we had no problem getting into fish right off the bat. Well, trout right now are kind of in a, a pre-spawn mode. Right now, the, probably the main forage fish for them is, uh, is mullet. Probably second is other trout. You know, and the fact is, which is pretty common in a lot of fisheries, if you're catching huge numbers of small fish, it's like you found junior high. And both Aubrey and Darren had pretty much explained that like the seniors in high school, you know, the big dogs, they're not typically running with the junior high pack. You know, we would get in the boat, we'd move to a different spot from mud bottom to sand bottom. Then we'd get in the boat in a different area and we'd drift it just to see if we can get some bites and just kind of played all our hands to see if anything would be a little different that would change our luck a little bit looking for that giant fish. Caught a lot of fish. I mean, we probably caught 60 trout in there uh, and that's not an exaggeration. But I come here at this time of the year into Baffin and Lower Laguna Madre and I'm looking for a 30 inch plus fish. Title, defense. Most of them fight like a wet sock, but you get a big one, you gotta know about it. Set the hook and you got that big old steel mustard mouth vampire coming out and shaking and just looking all vicious and You know, and finally, after a whole morning of waiting, I finally got the thunk I had been waiting for. I'm in the leader and I can't see what the hell it is. He's in the mud. And I'm watching it fight and it's digging and it's fighting a little different. I'm like, I know this isn't what we're here for. This isn't the big Texas steel. Really thought that was the gator, but Never going to complain about a nice red on light tackle. Nice fish, really nice fish, especially on light tackle weight. Not many people would turn that down, but I would. Fun fact, I cannot stand fishing with a hood on. Hate it. And then the weather just completely, it got colder. Um, it's wet above me. It's going to be wet inside my waders here shortly. It's raining, it's wet, and you're walking through sludge mud. It's like a Pantera concert and up into your hips. All three of those guys that were with me, of course, they're a lot younger than I am. And so I'm the, I was the old man of the group, and I'll be the first one to admit I was dog tired. You know, he needed a rest. So he took us out to one flat, dropped us off, said, you guys start pushing this way. I'm gonna do a drift down here from the boat. We'll see what happens and he goes drifting off. And you know, we caught, again, I think Zach caught another couple of reds, but we caught a few more trout, uh, just, but it was just, you know, picking here, picking there. This was literally our last spot of the day. And within 40 minutes, I see that boat get up on plane. Aubrey comes running over. Hey, Aubrey, welcome back. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, I'm like, he just caught a big fish. That's what we're looking for, yeah, that's about it. So I started thinking to myself, well, I was just gonna guide these guys around here, but I think I'm gonna join in on the fun right now. I'm gonna fish real hard, see if I can take that belt away from him. What's up, everybody? The inside of your waders ever smell like rancid cottage cheese? The reason they get so nasty is because you don't take care of them properly, but I'm not even gonna teach you how to do that. If I did that, I'd be a hypocrite because I don't take proper care of my waders either. Just like me, you're gonna take them off soaking wet, you're gonna ball them up, throw them in the truck, and you're not gonna turn them inside out and hang them to dry like you're supposed to. And while you're sitting at the bar afterwards, that, my friends, is how stinky bacteria grows. So when the funk gets too bad, don't go run into the dumpster. Here's how to fix it. Cleaners with bleach will definitely kill the stinky bacteria, but over time, the harsh chemicals can hurt the material and seals in your waders. If you only want your waders to smell like you just left the strip club, Febreze works. Thing is, Febreze only masks the odor temporarily. It doesn't kill the bacteria. Now, if you want to do it correctly, go to the sporting goods store and get the stuff that's specifically made for hockey pads, football helmets, jock straps, those kinds of things. Flip your waders inside out, hose them down, let them dry, and now you've just bought yourself many more months of waiter neglect. When we get back to the lodge here and we're beat, I mean, we're frozen to the bone beat and 
I I'm done. We're all done. You know, it is what it is. But then, all of a sudden, out of the blue, here comes one of the other guides from the Lodge Sutton. And he says, hey man, I fished last night and was positively crushing big trout on top waters. If y'all want to go out tonight, I'm heading back out around 5.30. I'm like, oh man. I'm like, okay. So we we went back out. People don't really like to go out at night. Mostly it's a morning thing. Most of the time, these early spring times, we got the whole bay to ourselves. And man, we're out there and there is not a ripple on the water. In the time between getting back to the lodge and going back out with Sutton, this was an entirely new day. It was like an entirely new season. And we start throwing top waters, and after about 10 minutes, boom. Through this material, today is used to be stimulated to do sexual activity for which he has no Spooky. Blew it right out of the winter. You'll hear that slur, and it just sounds like, like you were to take something and just suck it under the water real fast. Just, all you can hear were trout slurping mullet jumping. You can, you know, you can feel when you're getting ready to start catching fish. You can feel it. At least I can. I caught one that was 26, but what blew me away is that fish was right at six pounds. I'm missing everything. I had like 15 bites and I got like two fish. Sutton bust a good 21 over on the top water over on the other flank here that's got a big old gut on her. You know. The running theme here is that the outsiders, Zach and I, can't get it done and the local boys are crushing it. At the same time, even though the fish that I was catching and Zach was catching weren't these monsters, it's one of those things that makes you go, damn, am I glad I decided to take Sutton up on that because that was wicked. We got on the water the next morning watching this beautiful sunrise out there, but right where the sun was rising on the opposite side of the frame, there was a full moon, both of them in the air at the same time. And I know as a fisherman, through my personal experience on the flats or wherever it may be, there's a full moon in the sky, we're in big trouble. Uh, historically, it's, it's, it gets a little tough around full moon. The, the day of the full moon and the next two or three days afterwards are, yeah, I'd rather fall down in the parking lot and just get my elbows, but. We went out, hit a spot in Alizan that's usually really good. Um, no, no takers, not even a swirl, not a bump, nothing. So we moved to some rocks, uh, drifted some rocks. And there, we started just banging trout. The only problem was that we were in the nursery again. Cookie cutters, but just piles and piles out here. Most people think, like I said, of Baffin, this is the mecca of big trout. But uh, the shallow water sight casting game is very, very much underrated. And so one of the things I wanted to show them is that there are possibilities for sight casting down here in Baffin. So to finish out that day, he said, let's, let's do something entirely different. We're gonna make a run to some shallow clear water and we're gonna go try and sight fish for reds. And I was like, yippee, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm down with that. They're walking up the shoreline and, and you know, Aubrey with, with, with one good eye, spots of fish and it ended up being a pretty good redfish. And that's about the most significant thing that happens to us running around for 10 hours on that bay on the last day. And you know what? That would end up being our closing fish, which was a great fish. And as the incumbent with the World Championship Trout Waiting Belt, okay, I know Zach was not particularly happy that he had to leave it here in Texas. I'm not upset that I didn't get the belt. I, I, I fought hard for it. Um, but I'm glad it's staying in Texas. We caught fish, we talked a lot, we solved some of life's problems. And, uh, but the most important thing is, you know, that big trout that I caught. It's all right, baby, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm gonna come back and get you though. You belong back home in Florida, where the real gators live. And my girlfriend's probably gonna leave me. Uh, I'm soaked to the bones, but look at the check out this guy. He thinks he's gonna fly fish this shit over here. Hey, what's up, bros? You guys crushed today or what? We're at an Orvis endorsed lodge, and you're wearing a Porvis shirt. What are you trying to say? Backwood.